Hey back bags, it's Jade with the Community Crunch Roundup. Last night, obviously, some console fans were expecting to maybe see some more info, but I kind of had a feeling they wouldn't. They did give us that little statement that we saw, telling us that we'd see hopefully a release at the start of the coming week, but I wouldn't put money on it. If it failed sir, on Thursday, I just can't see why it's going to suddenly pass on Monday or Tuesday. I think the best bet we can hope for is the end of the week. Also, though, in this community crunch, there is talk about the turkey trials. Again, another contentious issue. Why are we doing events when it hasn't even been put on all platforms, the game? Well, we'll go into that a little bit. And, of course, the Dreadnoughtless got revealed in its dossier. All that plus Overwolf and how they're going to be answering a bunch of questions soon about how mods will work and possibly the future of the mods and arc working together. If you find this useful, do leave a like and let's go. So the Dreadnoughtus, it's massive. It's obviously going to be the maybe Titan killer on Extinction. Apparently it's not going to take on creatures like Spinosaurs. It will only take on bigger creatures in the wild. It will build up a fury of incoming attacks to charge up its uncanny element disrupting bellow. Even then, this bruiser shows extraordinary patience, wait until the last possible moment to come roaring back. It does sound like the powers for it are going to be a bit of a build up, so timing might be crucial when you release your charge attack and do a lot of damage to obviously anything tech related. Once tamed, Dreadnoughtus will gladly shoulder your heaviest artillery and carry and you into battle on a platform big enough to earn that Dreadnought name. Sounds like it's going to be our two fire, obviously boulders and rocks and pretty much all cannonballs and that's what's going to be going as a main target ammo. When it comes out, it's going to be covered in acid. So yeah, it looks good. I still prefer the original kind of design that they use for the vote marketing. It definitely had a much more ethereal kind of glow to it. It's going to be interesting to see these kind of, I guess, spikes or plates lifting up, maybe in sucking in air before expelling it in this bellow. Of course, it's going to be a long time since we see it, since Extinction won't be here for at least another six months, if at all until maybe the end of the year. I'm predicting some massive delays for some of these DLCs. Don't want to be a pessimist, but let's face it, it hasn't been the smoothest of launches. Are they really going to be in a position to release Scorched Earth straight away in the new year? It does say quarter one, so that could be all the way up until March. But if it's the very end of March, then yeah, I could see potentially uh, Aberration not arriving to sort of May or June, and then maybe Extinction September at earliest. October, November at worst. Then the crunch goes over the community stuff. If you had actually missed this, then they basically just said they're looking to give news at the start of this week coming now. But given they didn't have any info on Friday other than that it just failed, I can't really see how this is going to launch on a Monday or a Tuesday. The best bet would be maybe Thursday or Friday, but I'm starting to believe even more now that we might not see it until the end of the month like I reported. Even if it was a placeholder date or just not really a true reflection, we're getting so close to it now, it's only 12 days away, doesn't come out this week, then yeah, we're into the last part of November. You might as well just release it at the same time as PlayStation. Then moving on to the turkey trials, which have upset a bunch of people. The idea that you can do events and stuff when consoles still haven't had their release. I do get that train of thought, but let's face it, not every developer does the same job. The idea of it going through cert is going to be on Q&A and their core programmers. Whereas an event will probably have a live service team going over the details and trying to get this implemented. And it does sound like Overwolf are going to be bearing the brunt of the work here. Massive reason I'm so bitter about Wildcard and Arc over the years has been the delay of updates like these on console. Frequently, consoles would get them only for a few days or much later than PC with huge amount of problems. So if they're going to be spending a bit more time testing this out in a different way so that it's more actually reliable, I'm totally down for it. Even if it does suck right now that console can't even play the remaster, let alone a Turkey Trials update. But the thinking should be that as soon as we get the console versions, then maybe the Turkey Trials will be able to just be enabled so no one really misses out. And really, everyone's going to be playing the Winter Wonderland. That was meant to be the first event everyone could take part in. Looks like Wildcard are basically testing something out here. It's going to be a mod that will go onto the official network via Overwolf. This does represent some good things. It does mean that if you like a particular event, you can actually run it on your own servers or single player, and you just simply have to have the mod installed. Although Arc has always had for a while now anyway, that you could extend the event servers anyway on single player, and you could also find a way to do it on your own servers. So it's just the way they're delivering it is a bit different. This is gonna go live on November, the Tuesday 28th. 
and they're effectively going to be testing how the mods actually work. Again, this could be good news. They've never really said they're going to add any other new creatures other than the ones that have won via the community vote. But what if it turns out the community voted dinosaurs are basically overwolf mods and they just simply get added in in this format? This does reduce or makes life a lot better for players that not necessarily want to play official or don't really want to have huge updates all the time. They might be able to get away with just downloading the mods as they see fit, especially for single player calls in their own servers again. This also means that Wildcard have got a get out clause when they invariably start shutting down official servers come Arc 2's launch or maybe afterwards. They can point and say that people can still go ahead and have all the different events, all the different items and things that they may add as mods and players can get access to them in the future. It's going to be the same deal, go and kill turkeys, get turkey bones and you can put them in a pot I do believe and make up a nice Christmas turkey jumper or ugly sweater. Actually getting ahead of myself, it won't be Christmas themed as we should be having the Winter Wonderland and that's when stuff like that's coming. And then moving on to the Ark Town Hall. Curse Forge is going to be inviting people to take a look at what's going on with their mods. It's going to be on Monday, November the 20th, and I will absolutely report on everything that gets said. Effectively, it's going to be some sort of random chat, some sort of video stream where we get to talk or see what Overwolf is, what kind of mods possibly in the future means for Ark and mods, hopefully start to get a grasp of what kind of price points we might see for the premium mods that are not meant to be coming out until next year. Comes into the tools and how people are uploading and making them. And yeah, effectively, what's next? When are we going to see these premium mods launched? How is the difference between the mods that are going to be on console and the mods on PC? And is there going to be a huge amount of emphasis on trying to get everyone to go crossplay? As I've already told you, a bunch of PC mods look like they might not be necessarily prepping their mods for console. So hopefully the $375,000 kind of prize pool that they've got working might encourage them. I was going to be doing a QA at the end of it. So yeah, that should be a good video to cover. So far, there's over 500 mods available on the Curse Forge site for ARK. It's nowhere near the thousands that you can actually get on the Steam Workshop for Survival Evolved. And once again, iterating the idea that all of these mods are going to be somehow too big to be on console is kind of a bit of a lie. Sure, there may be a couple of 8K textures, but the vast majority you can see are really super tiny not even mounting up to a 1 MB. Maps will be bigger, absolutely. But even then you're starting to see some pop up. Although they're quite small, they're really not into the GB sizes. I'm gonna be delving deep into this very soon. I just need to get a start confirmation of some of the mods that will be available on Xbox. And you'll start to see the top five essential mods you'll need. Them kind of videos are very much incoming on this channel. But right now, yeah, there isn't a lot of maps available. And the bonus rates have gone ahead. They did state that they will try and get people a little boost. This is going live all weekend. Breeding, obviously taming, harvesting and experience all increased. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, there can only be so many times I'm going to rant and rave about the failures of them with the console stuff. For sure, it would be nice to be given proper details about what's gone wrong. But clearly, Wildcard are not changing. They've not really done that in a long time. So don't expect that to change now. We just got to hope that for Xbox fans, they get the actual game coming this week and that PlayStation doesn't have any more delays. So that's it. Until I cover the mod q and I'll see you at bag soon.